So how did you fall off a balcony, Jeff? It seemed to come pretty naturally at the time. What were you doing up there? I was trying to catch him, wasn't I? Red-handed, opening the safe. The police were waiting for him. Marty, I didn't know that. Well, at least you got a ride to hospital in a police car. Yeah, big deal. It makes a change. Well, that's another case you've ruined. What do you mean, ruined? We won't get the reward money now, will we? I suppose you've come here to cheer me up. I know you used to nag me, Jeff, when I was alive. But I never had a failure as big as this. Never? Never. In fact, when you look back on it, I was pretty good. Oh, own up, Marty. You were a terrible detective. I was a what? Well, maybe not terrible, but you certainly weren't a natural. At least I didn't fall off a balcony. The only time I slipped up, I got killed. You couldn't have fallen off a tram. Well, you know what I mean. Anyway, who solved our biggest case alone? Biggest case? I never gave you the full story about that, did I? <sighs> not lately, Marty. No, I didn't. You were away in Scotland at the time. I remember you were away about a fortnight. You were after those peasant poachers. The what? I mean, the pheasant poachers. Oh, the tartan case. I was in the office. There was nothing much happening. It was just routine. But even then, the story was unfolding. In the corridors of power, people were talking. The where? The corridors of power. Anyway, in the corridors of power, things were happening. A.R. Palmer, inquiry service. Pennington Investigations, Randall and Hopkirk. Randall? Yes. Geoffrey Randall? Yes, that's right. Do you know him? He was in my unit. Yes, it must be the same man. He'd be ideal. Shall I? Why not? Randall Hopkirk. Hopkirk speaking. Uh, may I speak to Mr. Randall, please? Mr. Jeffrey Randall. Oh, I'm sorry. He's not here at the moment. He's away for a week and I can't get in touch with him. Can I help? Randall's away for a week or more. We'd better stick to someone we know. Now, wait. Who are you talking to, his partner? Yes, Hopkirk. Hello? I'm not sure that wouldn't be even better. Yes, yes, don't you see? I could... I think Hopkirk is exactly the man we want. Darling, when am I going to get out of here? When you're better. I thought they were never going to go. I wish they hadn't. Now then, where was I? You were making a telephone call, remember? Of course I remember. I was just making sure that you were listening. I'd arranged his appointment. Appointment? With who? I'm coming to that. Can I go on? Yes, sure, Marty. I'm not going anywhere. Right. Well, I'd arranged this appointment, and I was on the way back to the office to tell Jeannie. Way! What was Jeannie doing in the office? Well, I had to have someone to answer the telephone, didn't I? I mean, you were away in Scotland. On the Tartan case. Right. Carry on. Hello, darling. Oh, good news. I'll say it is. <laughs> Mrs. Crowder phone. Looks like a job. Not interested. Not interested? Marty! Forget her. Darling, what's happened? What time is it? Uh, 10.30. Why are you wearing your best suit? Good. Mustn't be late. Late? Late for what? Oh, nothing. I have an appointment with MI5, that's all. Marty, 
Have you been drinking? No. I am seeing Sir Basil Duggan in his office at 11.30 today. Duggan? Well, that's one of the top men, isn't it? Deputy Chief. And he wants me to do a job for him. Oh, come on, Jeannie. This is the biggest thing that's ever happened to us. Aren't you going to congratulate me? Oh, darling, that's wonderful. Mm. Must we have the love interest bit? What do you mean, love interest? She's my wife. Besides, I was enjoying it. Anyway. Congratulations. Mm. Uh, what about Mrs. Grother? Forget her. Tell them I'm engaged on important government business. Yes, sir. I mean, sir. Hello? Uh, Randlin Hopkirk? Sir Basil? <laughs> I had an appointment with Mr. Hopkirk at 11.30 at my office. I'm afraid I shall have to cancel it. Oh, I see. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, I'll tell him. Fine. Thank you. Goodbye. Jeannie, what is it? What is it? Well, um, the appointment's been cancelled. Oh, no! Oh! What's that note from Mrs. Crowther? Hey, Jack, why don't kill me? Marty! <laughs> Marty, I should have said postponed. It's at two o'clock at his club. You did that on purpose, didn't you? Two o'clock? Where's his club? Can I help you? Uh, yes. I have an appointment with Sir Basil Duggan. Mr. Hopkirk. That's right. This way. Sir Basil. Mr. Hopkirk. Ah. Sit down, Hopkirk. Get your drink? Oh, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, tomato juice. Rose. Tomato juice. And a large whiskey for me. Hmm. Hmm. I knew your partner in the army. Oh, I see. That's why you... Good chap. Reliable. Yes, he is. You stand for the Queen? What? National anthem. Oh, yes. Yes, I do. Good. That's the test. Not many people do, you know. Not these days. Yes, um, I've got some references. We checked. This is top secret. Can't be too careful. Cheers. Cheers. Now, oh, I expect you're wondering what... Uh... Well, yes, I am. The names and details of all our agents in the Middle East have disappeared from my office. I want them back before they can be sent out of the country. You sound as though you know where they are. I do. They're in the safe of a subordinate of mine, a fellow named Thompson. But what's the problem? I mean, if he's stolen them, why don't you arrest him? We know Thompson's a spy, but he's not the top man. I see. If you arrest him, the top man gets away. And the rest of the ring go to ground. When we move in, we want the lot. But why me? I mean, surely you must have your own men who could do the job. Two reasons. Thompson's not the only spy in the service. We don't risk a leak. I see. Hmm. Oh, you said you had two reasons? Yes. If you're caught, there's no connection with the department. You mean I'll be on my own? No alternative. Of course, in time, I'll be able to pull some strings, get you out of jail, maybe even square it with the police so you can continue your business. I don't know. This sounds a bit dodgy to me. It's for your country, Hopkirk. Randall wouldn't have hesitated for one moment. So you've agreed. When do you do it? Tonight. Tonight? Oh, Marty, you can't open a safe. No, but I know someone who can. Are you sure there's nobody at home? Positive. How about alarms? We'll have to be careful, Joe. I wouldn't do it for anyone. It's not for me, Joe. It's for our country. So you said. I don't like traitors. I only hope I don't end up sharing the same cell with them.
kullanır. There's a wire. The brass clip makes a connection. Break that and the balloon will go up. Can you handle it? Can I handle it? What do you think I am, an amateur? Kirk, help Kirk. That is not what we came for. He probably got those for betraying national secrets. Yes, well, we just came for the papers. Come on, Joe, put them back. Okay, if you say so. me off here. Oh, right. And thanks, Joe. Wait, Joe, your money. Now, see, as this was for my country. Joe, I'm proud of you. You took those diamonds. Here, give me that. No wonder you're a detective, Hopkirk. You've got a nasty, suspicious mind. That's what you paid me for. Yes, this is it. Good work, man. There's the rest of your money. No trouble? And I went like clockwork. Spend it, spend it. And I can't promise you any medals, but I can assure you, your country will not forget you. Good night. Good night. You sure? I'm a gog, Marty. A gog. You just written down a car number, right? Why? Because I'm a good detective. That's why. Oh, I see. Uh, what happened next? Um. Well. Well, nothing really until next morning. Ooh. 
morning, darling. Why didn't you lie in? You were awfully late last night. It's all right. I'm not tired. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. Did it go all right last night? What did Sir Basil say? Oh. I'll tell you all about it. As soon as I finish this coffee. Oh. Marty, look at this. What? Look. Vital secret But... Secret information was stolen last night from the house of Major General Hickson, the chief of MI5. Calling Sir Basil. What about the necklace? Eh? What says that a diamond necklace was stolen, too? Hello? Sir Basil Duggan, please. Now, my name's Hopkirk. Oh. Oh, I see. Oh, where can I get hold of him? Right, thanks. Not there? No. I shall have to try him at his club. Yes, sir? Oh, I want to see Sir Basil Duggan. Is he expecting you? Yes, he is. This way, please, sir. Gentlemen, to see you, sir. Yes? Yes? What do you want? I don't remember. Have I had the pleasure of meeting you before? Change of course. We're putting into London. Ah, oh, come on, Marty. How could you know that happened? Well, something like it must have done. Why? It'll all fall into place in a minute. Yeah, all right, you tell it your way. I'm trying to. Anyway, what were you doing while all this Morse code was dee da ditting through the ether? Well, I was still shattered at the military club. Where's the man who was on yesterday? I was on duty yesterday, sir. Yes, but who else? I'm sorry. Look, don't give me that. I was here yesterday and I saw another man. Get lost. So why didn't you go after him? Because he wouldn't have talked, would he? How'd you know that? My super deductive powers told me. I'm not going to go on with this story. Uh. Oh, what a pity. And I was just getting interested. Really? Yeah. I mean, you were just telling me what a super deductive detective you were. I mean, so far you've uh, been briefed by an imposter, stolen state secrets, and given them away to an enemy agent. Not bad. Well, none of us are perfect. But what happened next, Marty? I'm not going to tell you. Oh, come on, Marty. Well, only if you promise not to interrupt again. I won't, I won't. Promise? Promise. No, I'm not going to tell you. Oh, please yourself. Well, anyway, we were... Brennan. Who? I told you never to call me here. Hopkirk's been here again. He uh, saw Sir Basil. Yes, yes, you were right to let me know. Thanks. They're rerouting the ship. Be in London docks tonight. Good. Everything's okay. Hmm? Oh, yes. As long as Hopkirk doesn't dig too deep. He's been asking questions. Well, it shouldn't be too difficult to get rid of him.
Yes? Well, where is he? Mr. Hopkirk. Who else? Well, he's out. He should be back by now. Are you sure he hasn't scarpered? Scarpered? You know, run away. He would if he was wise. Who are you? What do you want? Who am I? I'm just the guy he made a monkey out of. All that spiel about helping my country. Oh, that? Oh, he made a mistake. He didn't... Ah, yes, he made a mistake. Well, he got the wrong man. I'm patriotic. You can tell him from me when he gets back that... Don't bother, I'll tell him. Joe? Look, I've been meaning to... Where are they? What? The papers. Oh, I haven't got them. I handed them over. Well, get them back. Get them back? What about you and the diamond necklace? What's that got to do with it? What's that got to do with it? That was just a good, honest, straightforward robbery. Joe? 24 hours. I give you 24 hours to get them papers back. After that, me and the boys will be after you. Oh, Jeannie, what a mess. Marty, what's happened? The man who gave us the job wasn't Sir Basil Duggan. He wasn't? Who was he? I don't know. I suppose it must have been someone who knew Jeff. Probably in the army, like he said. Well, what did he look like? It was tall, thin, grey hair, moustache. Jeannie, Jeff's got a photograph of his old unit. Has he? Yes, in his apartment. He showed it to me once. Listen, do you think you could go around there and try and find it for me? Marty, I don't have a key. The porter will let you in. Just tell him it's a matter of life and death. Oh, the man you're looking for probably isn't even in the photograph. Yes, but he could be, couldn't he? I mean, it's worth a try, isn't it? Marty, you're such a worrier. Yes, well, I've got something to worry about this time, haven't I? This treason. Jeannie. I've got his car number. I took it down. Could you try and trace it for me? There's a fellow called Brinkley. He works in records. He's a friend of Jeff's. His number's in the book. Of course. Well, what about you? I'll have to go around to the club again. I've got to try and see that porter I saw yesterday. Let's hope he's on duty. Marty. Oh. I see. Well, I was on the way to the club. I shouldn't go there, Hopkirk. It's members only. So where to? You choose. Any place you'd like a last look at? Scotland Yard? Sorry. See, I just don't have to have a license for this gun. You could get arrested for that. That's it. So let's not take any chances, and Drive us somewhere nice and quiet. Right. Come in. Yes? Chief Inspector Horner, Special Branch. Inspector, what can I do for you? I'm making inquiries about the robbery. Oh, at Major General Hickson's? Yes. I'm hoping you can help me. Me? I don't understand. It's, it's routine, sir. We have to question everyone who knew about the papers. I see. Well, what do you want to know? Anyone in the department, sir, whose loyalty is suspect? Certainly not. No unauthorized persons around? Well, not to my knowledge. Nothing you can tell me that might help? I don't think so. I'm sorry. If you think of anything. Of course. No, uh, no leads? Well, the man who did the job was an experienced safe breaker. They all have their own methods. We should be able to trace him. OK, Hopco, this'll do. Pull up here. Anything you say. It serves you right. You should have put your safety belt on. Oh, it must have been very hard. The way I trod on the brake, I expected him to go right through. Marty, he could be suffering from concussion. Says him right. He's got a very bad cut here. Jeannie, darling, don't expect me to pity him. He was trying to kill me. Did you get that photograph from Jeff's? Oh, yes, I did. Yeah. I think that's the one. Yes, I'm sure it is. Well, that doesn't help much, does it? Well, why not? No names. You've got the person, you still don't know who it is. Perhaps I should take it round to the club. Now? Yeah. Well, Marty.
Marty, what about him? Well, he's unconscious. Well, Marty, why can't we just phone the police and tell them? Darling, I haven't got any proof. It's their word against mine, and I did the robbery. If I don't sort this out, I'm going to get 30 years. Do you want me to stay with him? Yes, I don't like it. I wish Jeff was here. I'll be all right. Perhaps you'd better tie him up, though. Yes, I was going to anyway, and I'll leave you the gun. Make it tight, Marty. <sighs> Darling, you will be back as quickly as you can, won't you? Of course I will. <clears throat> and listen, Jeannie, don't take any chances. Thanks, Jeannie. You mean you left Jeannie alone? Well, what else could I have done, Jeff? So what happened? Do you any good? Oh, you're hurting me. It's nothing to what I'll do if you don't do as you're told. Oh. Now, come on. Oh. Untie me. Oh. Come on. Hello, Jackson. Is Major Brennan there? Uh, no. What is it? What? You let him escape? Yes. Yes, that's Major Brennan, sir. You're sure? I think so, sir. Uh, do you know where he lives? I'm afraid not, sir. Uh, but his name and address should be in the club register, sir. Uh, could you page Major Brennan for me, please? It's rather urgent. Page you, Major Brennan. Major Brennan. Major Brennan. Major Brennan. Major Brennan. Major Brennan. Oh, no. Major Brennan, please. Major Brennan. Major Brennan, please. Please. Major Brennan? Here. Yeah. Sir, could you find Mr. Parker when you came? All right, thanks.
Well, if it isn't Sir Basil Duggan. What? What are you doing here? Never mind that. Come on. Now, wait a minute. No arguments. Just get dressed. We're going to the police. Come on. It's Hopker! Get him! Get him out. Far too hot for me. And for me. Oh, it's it's not too bad. It's a bit strong, isn't it? <laughs> All right, only a couple left. How do you want it? Medium or well done? Things look pretty black, Marty. There's Jean. And you? What happened next? As if I didn't know. You're not going, are you? Beg your pardon? Look, I know it's hot, but... Hot? <laughs> Marvellous! Reminds me of my service in Africa. Paul! <sighs> you see, I can't get out of here. There are three men waiting for me outside. But they won't come in as long as you're here. What's that? If I step outside, I'm a dead man. I say, you sure this heat's not affecting you? No, no! Heat does things, you know. I've known fellows in the tropics go completely to pieces. No, it's got nothing at all to do with the heat. You see, it's... Look, it's no good. I shall have to take you into my confidence. Oh, I see. The men waiting outside are spies. Spies? Yes, spies. But I can't go to the police because they think I am. And what? I mean... Um... A spy. You see, I stole these secret papers. Oh. And they're waiting to kill you? That's it. Yes, good. Now you're catching on. Look, if we left together... Perhaps they won't try anything. Yes. Yes, and then I can round up Major Brennan and sort everything out. What? Oh, bravo, bravo. I suppose you don't mind if I take a look first. No, no, no. Go ahead. Right. Right. Be careful.
You look warm, Hopcock. But you'll soon cool off. In the mortuary. Make a good job of it. Come on, Hopcock. You've got him. What? This is the fellow, Doctor. He was fully clothed in the hottest room, telling me that everyone was a spy. Oh, well, that sounds serious. All right, I'll take over. I'd better get him to the hospital. Come along, old man. Nothing for you to worry about. Not now, there isn't. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Better. I'm sorry I let him get away, darling. It's my fault, Jeannie. I should never have left you. What are we going to do? I don't know. Hello. Yes? They traced that car number. They found Brennan's address. That was a bit lucky, wasn't it? What do you mean, lucky? I took his number down, didn't I? Oh. All right, if you say so. Anyway. I left Jeannie in the apartment, I got into my car, and sped to the address. Mr. Brennan. Uh, Captain Rossi. Of course. Everything as planned, huh? Not quite. Oh. But uh, you have the papers. Oh, yes. Good. Good. My government will be very happy. I'm sure they will. What time do you sail? We have missed the tide. We cannot leave now before 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Why? I'm sailing with you. Ah. You have trouble, hmm? Yes. Police will be after me soon. If they're not already. So, you will find a new home in my country, hmm? I hope so. Perhaps you'd better give me the papers. I'll hide them somewhere safe. Of course. Yes. 
splendid. We drink a toast, eh? Thank you. To my country. Your country too, now, hmm? To our country. Anyway, I was just going to leave the ship to get the police. When, suddenly, I turned and there were these eight sailors. Wait a minute. How many? Five. Five. Two. Who is he? Do you know? The man I employed to. All right, we'll hear the story later. Lock him in one of the storerooms. We'll see he gives you no more trouble. So, there I was, a prisoner, and I knew I just had to get out of there. So. What happens now? Don't tell me, Marty. I think I know. You do? Yeah. You're not taking me seriously. Now, what makes you think that, Marty? Shall I go on with the story or not? Go on, go on. Right. I managed to get the ropes off. And I went over to have a look at the door. I found a spring clip to use as a screwdriver. And slowly, I took the screws out. And although I didn't know it at the time, Jeannie was with Inspector Horner. I'm sure there's some mistake. It's no use, miss. They caught me with the diamonds. Well, that's your affair, Marty. I mean, Mr. Hopkirk went for the papers. Where is Hopkirk? He went after a man called Brennan. Brennan? Yes, he was the man who commissioned him. He said he was Sir Basil Duggan of MI5. I told you. Mr. Hopkirk thought he was working in the national interest. And Hopkirk went after Brennan? Yes. I can check that. May I use your phone? Yes, of course. Inspector, he should have been back ages ago. I'm sure he's in some sort of danger. Is Major Brennan there? Do you know where he is? All right, I'll try his home. Hello, um, Mayday, Mayday, SOS, I've got an urgent message. You must tell the police. Mayday, Mayday. Our clearance. Take that to the port office. Brennan's disappeared. Now do you believe me? Randall and Hopkirk? Oh, one moment, please. It's for you, your office. Thank you. Horner speaking. A message from the British Broadcasting Corporation. We shall be away in five minutes. We have to take a pilot on board, of course. Well, I'd better get out of sight. Major Brennan, planning a sea trip. And that was that. It didn't make the newspapers, of course, for security reasons. Otherwise, I would have been a national hero. Yeah, but of course. Anyway, it proves a point. Does it? There's a visitor for you, Mr. Randall. I'll take care of the flowers. I'll put them in a vase for you. Hello, Jeff. How are you feeling? Oh, much better, thanks, Jeannie. Brought a few things for you. You spoil me. 
Perhaps I do. Well, you can do something for me. Yeah? What? Just tell me something. How did you fall off the balcony? You know, on my way here, I was thinking about Marty, how he'd have handled it. You know, Jeff, looking back, he was a pretty good detective. You see? She's taken the words right out of my mouth. Do you remember that case he handled? Yeah, very well, Jeannie. He never did tell you that story properly, did he? Y yes, he did, in detail. You were in Scotland at the time. What was it? Poaching or something like that? The Tartan case. I'm leaving, Jeff. This is where I came in. Anyway... I was helping Marty in the office. Routine day, nothing much happening. But even then, the story was unfolding. People were talking in the corridors of power. The where? The, uh, nothing. Look, Jeff, please don't interrupt. After all, who's telling this story? You are, Marty. Yeah, I mean, Jeannie. Yes, well, I was helping in the office. 